They say that getting there is half the fun, but with nearly three and a half thousand kilometres between Melbourne and Waluna, in this case it'd certainly better be. We started off early, loaded up the roof rack parked on the street, and headed off in a westerly direction. Passing the Grampians and giving the Winlink email over HF setup a quick test. Filling up with diesel that cost under $2 a litre for the first time in months. Finally getting to our first night's destination, a cabin in the caravan park in Port Augusta. It's pretty unassuming, but all you need is a bed, right? Having arrived well after sunset, we then departed well before sunrise, filling up with diesel at the cheapest place in town, and heading further west until we reach Sejuna for lunch. Sejuna has the last decently cheap fuel for nearly 1400 kilometres until we reach Kalgoorlie, so here we filled all seven of our jerry cans for the first time. If you're reliant on the fuel stations across the Nullarbor, expect to pay over $3 a litre. But we weren't just filling the jerry cans for cost reasons, we needed to check they were in good shape and weren't going to leak on us, as Kalgoorlie may well be the last place we could buy a replacement. The willow jerry cans we have on the roof have caps that need to be tightened unreasonably tight if you're not storing them upright. After finding this out the hard way, and wiping diesel off the roof, it was time to head to the other service station, but only for lunch at the attached Hungry Jacks. Yeah, there's probably better food available here, but the schedule's tight, and sometimes you just want to know what you're getting. Sun-faded soft drink. Served warm the way you like it. Only $3 a bottle. A few hours of driving later, and it's time to empty the first few jerry cans. It's a little tricky to get the hose on the willow cans in place, as it bends on a strange angle, and they're quite slow to drain due to the breather tube being in the pourer. While crossing the Nullarbor, the road's pretty long and desolate, and there's not much to see. The name comes from the Latin Null Arbor, meaning no trees, which is not entirely true, the odd one seems to grow. But we decided to take a look at the coastline by heading out to one of the campsites, and we sent the drone up for a look around. Reaching the border village roadhouse some hours later with a little sunlight to spare, after checking in we proceeded through the quarantine checkpoint into Western Australia. The border village roadhouse is located just on the South Australian side of the border, but we head for the tiny town of Eucla on the West Australian side, home to a population of 53 and the very unusual time zone of UTC plus 845, splitting the difference between SA and WA time. But what we're really here for is the old telegraph station. In the 1890s, a rabbit plague ate up all the vegetation holding these sand dunes together, and as a result, large amounts of drifting sand buried the original township of Eucla. The ruins of the telegraph station remain to this day, disappearing further into the sand as time goes on. This repeater station had a very important duty. At the time, Victoria and South Australia were using American Morse code, and Western Australia was using International Morse code, or what is referred to today as just Morse code, and the two had to be translated between. 
Our original plan was to camp somewhere around here, but we ended up booking a room at the Border Village Roadhouse because after a long day of driving we weren't sure how much we'd want to set up camp here. But in hindsight, we could have. It's an amazing place. After refueling with more of the jerry cans, we headed back to the roadhouse via a puddle which the depth of was evaluated by stone throw to be a lot deeper than it originally looked. It was another early start the following morning and we re-entered Western Australia to cross the rest of the Nullarbor. Now pick your gloves quite carefully here. Not all, not all plastic gloves are resistant to diesel. Pick the wrong ones and you will have a very sticky mess on your hands, literally. Stopping to have breakfast and to empty the last of the jerry cans into the vehicle, we discovered that the ProQuip cans are a lot easier to empty if you put the nozzle in first, then undo the breather cap. They empty a lot quicker than the willow cans, but sadly you can't keep them in any other orientation than upright, so we can't use them on the roof. With a full tank in the vehicle, we head on towards Norseman. This is the part of the Nullarbor with the famous 90 mile straight. Although this is the longest, straightest section of road anywhere in Australia, it doesn't actually feel that way, as it's not as flat as you'd think, so you actually can't see as far as you'd expect, which somewhat ruins the effect. Upon reaching Norseman, we headed south towards Bromus Dam, first trying a different campsite closer to the town. The road was closed, so Bromus Dam it was. This campsite is, well, around a dam. We're here because we somehow couldn't find an available motel room anywhere around here for the next three weeks. But I think it's about time we actually camp somewhere on this trip. See, this is why you test things at home. <laughs> Gotta check we've got everything before it's too late to buy anything we've forgotten. Oh, again. Only all the time. Um, yeah, I'll leave you to get back to whatever you're doing. BK5QI, BK3FUR. Yeah, I'll be best start making dinner.
In the morning, we pack up camp and head to Kalgoorlie, 250 kilometers to our north, finding the cheapest fuel in town. Now, wiki travel states Kalgoorlie Boulder is as remote as remote gets, but that's not even close to where we'll disappear from civilization. There's still four more towns before we reach Waluna, just over another 500 kilometers of driving. We pick up some lunch, some fresh vegetables as we weren't allowed to bring them into Western Australia, hence the checkpoint, and a significant amount of cash in case Kanawarichi's FPOS machine isn't working. The Leonora rest stop's all a bit of a veneer. But the real thing's actually not that much bigger. But further north we go, testing out the backup option for navigation. Um, and that's where we'll be staying today. BK5 QI, BK3 FQR. Uh, Roger, okay, good day. You're staying north of Waluna. Yeah, okay, gotcha. And finally, arriving in Waluna. We filled all the jerry cans in Kalgoorlie, where the fuel was still relatively cheap, so it was just a matter of topping off the vehicle's fuel tank before driving out into the desert. The feeling that we were going on such an adventure really hadn't set in until today. Maybe it was the camping that did it. But I remember a bit over 15 years ago, reading Wikipedia and coming across the page on the Canning Stock Route. I found a site called Explorers and read their page on the trek, reading about the fuel drops, supplies, logistics and stories of broken down vehicles. It was fascinating, but it certainly seemed like a destination for hardcore adventurers with serious vehicles, and I couldn't even imagine what it would be like. To me at the time, it was like reading about someone's mountaineering expedition to climb Mount Everest. I certainly didn't imagine that in about 15 years time I'd find myself standing here, in Waluna, looking towards the south end of the canning, keys to a land cruiser in my pocket, about to drive nearly 2,000 kilometres through the absolute middle of nowhere. Two things were missing from this reality though. No night before the expedition spent at the gun barrel lager, as it had sadly become financially unsustainable during the extended closure of the track. And no beer at the Waluna Club Hotel either, the unofficial start of the modern CSR. The building's still there, but it's now about the furthest thing you can get from a pub, now being the Shire of Waluna's council offices. So full of fuel and having met up with Rusty, the other half of our convoy, we headed up the wide graded Waluna North Road, past the pair of rainbow canning stock route signs, and our first turn is on the left. Drive a few kilometres through the dirt and dust, and here it is, well won. The first of many more to come. Now you may remember from last time I said that the cattle droving was done from north to south, and then wonder why well one is at this end, not in the north where they start. The answer is that Canning's original survey trip was conducted south to north, much like the four wheel driving tends to be these days. But as the sun set and the light started to fade, we had to press on. Tonight's camping stop was the amazing North Pool. And the next morning's walk found a trailer that had seen better days something that we'd soon be seeing a lot more of. Heading out from there, we made our way back to Waluna North Road. And continued further north until we reached the turn off. This is it. This is the start of the Canning Stock Route four-wheel drive track, marking the end of the road, but the beginning of an adventure. Join us next time for the beginning of the proper adventure itself. Subscribe so you don't miss it, and see you then.